This is Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. Welcome to Seasons of Discontent, Season 11, Episode 10, brought to you by Rick Snyder's Washington across social media. And I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. And we're back discussing all things Washington sports and life as part of the mighty Rick Snyder Empire, which celebrates its fourth anniversary very soon and its 20 millionth view. Man, who, who would imagine that? Uh, so please, are, like, are we getting a prize for 20 million? Yeah, who would be the 20 millionth? I guess I, the, I'll be the 20 millionth if there's a prize. All right. Yeah, well, it'll be a surprise. How about that? <laughs> Speaking of surprises, is it real? I wrote my column for 106.7 The Fan, odyssey.com if you're reading, A-U-D-A-C-Y. And I said, is this real? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't expect them to win three out of every four games and be 12 and five or whatever. But I think they're looking like a 9-10 win team now. I mean, the season's first half schedule looks pretty winnable. It could be six and three. Second half, you got to play Philly twice, Dallas twice, and four other decent teams. But, you know, we've, we've seen mirages before. I think this one has a little more solid backing. Well, yeah, it's real because we're not asleep. So it's definitely real. Um, they are three and one. Um, I mean, honestly, Rick, there's got to be a lot of factors that go into sustaining this. I mean, they've been relatively healthy aside from Eckler. You know, as far as starters go, I mean, they've had guys like Cleveland Farrell and Jim, uh, Jamison Crowder and guys like that who are contributors, however, just not main factors of the team. Obviously, um, you know, we waited for the defense to kind of make their move. It's weird, too, because like we were waiting for the offense to make their move and they played the Giants and they ended up with seven field goals, couldn't pound it in the end zone. Everybody's, oh, oh, same old, same old commanders teams last year, couldn't find the end zone. And then it seemed like overnight against the Bengals, the offense just started clicking. I mean, we talked about it last week. It was more towards the end of the giant game when the offense started clicking. But um, I think during the Bengal game, they really put it together. And then this week against Arizona, I mean, you're playing a, a pretty decent quarterback. You're playing a, a top 10, top five draft pick wide receiver who's, select, who's supposed to be a stud. You've got a great uh, running back. And this defense woke up. I mean, whatever they were doing, it worked. Um, honestly, you have to credit Cliff Kingsbury a lot because he knows Kyler Murray's weaknesses. I'm sure he had a couple conversations with Joe Witt and Dan Quinn about the Arizona offense. It's not that much different than when he was there. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's real. I'm not going to go quite nine or 10 wins. However, they have gotten two wins now that I didn't see as wins before the season in, in the Bengals and in, in Arizona. Well, they are ranked ninth in the pro football talk power rankings. And mm. pro football, Cloyer loves to bam out this team. And oh, Florio been- hates this team. I'm surprised they're that high. I know. He always makes them like 30th. And I thought, ninth? Now you're delusional. I'm not sure I put them at number nine on there. That, that just shocked me that the national media has suddenly awakened. I mean, I get the quotes from Sunday Night Football pregame commentary. Never, ever do they talk about Washington. And this time they actually did talk about Jaden, finally. You know, it's, I guess it's safe to talk about Jaden. But the national media is waking up to it. So, you know, I'll give the defense credit. They woke up late in the Cincinnati game when I thought, uh oh, this is really going to be a shootout. They got to keep going. And they managed to hold on at the end. And then, okay, they gave up an opening touchdown. Looked like an easy life. I thought, here we go. But, you know, they got four sacks, and they, they may, you know, get a pass rush, you got a pass defense. Lou Vu played his best game. I mean, that dude, when he's on, when he's hot, he's psycho out there. That's like Wilbur Marshall going around and hitting people. Uh, so they, they got what they needed. To me, the kicker is one of the great stories because, you know, two weeks ago they're desperate for a kicker, and this guy's gone out there and made 10 of 10. A few yeah. of them are kind of pressure spots. Uh, you know, so that's been – one of the things, if you watch the All-22, which a lot of fans do now, is the downfield blocking has been really good. Mm-hmm. That makes such a difference. <clears throat> they had Mark Phelps come see the team Saturday night talk about sacrifice, which is kind of funny from a guy in an individual sport. But um, 
talked about how you have to do it. And this team has really gotten along well to help each other out. Downfield blocks, I can't tell you how many receivers, if it ain't coming to them, they're not blocking anybody. But they're doing it now, and the you know tight ends are blocked. And it's really created some really big plays. It's not something you normally see when you're really watching the game. Mm-hmm. And that's been a big help. The chemistry is there, which is amazing, given 60 new players. And I don't even know if it's more now, but 60%, I should say. Um, you know, everything's so new. It was a solid win against a halfway decent team against Arizona. Uh, you know, I give I didn't I picked it. I think last week you picked it too. But uh, yeah, we both picked them to win. We didn't pick them to win forty two to fourteen. But yeah, and and you you touched on Luvu. I think uh, uh, two two of the big free agent acquisitions that also stepped up along with Luvu was Chin and Dorrance Armstrong. I think Dorrance Armstrong was towards the top of PFF's defensive tackle grades. Um, forcing forcing the, the Kyler out of the pocket forcing you know making sacks and stuff like that our D tackles finally woke up I mean we've been asking for Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne to make some sort of of jump in this new defense I mean look it can't be not said that three games of of preseason for 60 percent new players new schemes all over the field you know so many new people in the building, it was going to take a while for them all to come together. Are they coming together quicker than I expected? Yes. Uh, You know, you can see the chemistry in the, um, you know, behind the scenes stuff. Like I know they, when Quinn presented Cliff Cliff Kingsbury with the game ball, you just saw that locker room was electric and, and and it can't be, it, it has to go. We have to talk about the fact that Quinn Peters and everybody, they didn't go home after Cincinnati. They flew to Arizona. Uh, Harrison team, Harrison and his group put them up in a hotel for the whole week. They they practice at Arizona State. Like you can't the, the the they didn't get a chance to come home and get comfortable. It was like a it was you know it was a road trip. It was like a baseball road trip. You know they <laughs> they went to the West Coast and they stayed on the West Coast and it worked. I mean. And it's also that that's something that you're missing with not having training camp in a Frostburg is you don't get that camaraderie. And I think that this trip, not only, especially when, since they came off with two very impressive wins over two pretty good teams, the Bengals, especially, um, you know, you, you built that camaraderie, you know, and, and, and they had that bonding time by themselves. And, but you know, it, look, it all goes through the quarterback. We, we've seen it in this town when the quarterback is hot, the whole team is playing well when the quarterback's cold and and nobody wants nothing to do with him, the whole team just kind of sucks. I mean, they have a chance to be four and one, Rick. They haven't been t- four and one since 2008 with Jason Campbell. You know, I mean, <laughs> this is, this is not where I thought we were going to be at this time. And, and I know last week I was more ecstatic, but I think at this point, I'm just kind of shocked. Like, will it end? Sure. You know, they're probably going to lose to the Ravens. Let's be honest. The Ravens are a way better team. They are, right. they are a more, they are a better constructed team. And I don't see this defense stopping that Mack truck of Derrick Henry. I mean, we saw what he did against the bills. Um, but you know, as long as they're able, I think the thing that we have to really pay attention is, okay, say they beat the Browns, they're going to be four and one. Then you got to play the bang or the, the Ravens say they go in and they have a competitive game against the Ravens, but obviously they'd lose it, it, It's We have to see what this team does going into the next week. We have to see how they rebound. We have to see how Jaden responds. If he has a bad game. I mean, look, 82% completions. That's not going to last throughout the whole year. I think we know that, but I think it's more of, and we saw it against Arizona through his first interception. And, and I tweeted, I said, look, I'm fine with the pick. I need to see how he responds to the pick. And he passed with flying colors in my eyes. I want to see how he responds to a loss, like like a tight loss that we could probably guess they're going to have against the Ravens. Yeah, if it's a tight loss, that'd be a, a win almost. Yeah. At the moving Johnny Newton more and more into the lineup as a starting inside player, it means they've kicked to Ron Payne outside some. And I think that's helping him because Quinn said, I want a more stout uh defensive line and I thought but Ron Payne's pretty big <laughs> you know John Allen's big but Ron Payne's huge Johnny Newton he's a really big dude too you know when you stand next to them off the field you realize wow mm-hmm. I often laughed about I was telling somebody if you stand next to these guys and you think how could I block them how did Davis beat Goliath 
you know, that huge guy across the battlefield. Well, he picked up a rock and hit him upside the head. I don't think they let him do that in the NFL. <laughs> but, you know, these dudes are humongous. And now they do have, a, you know, maybe Payne's better kicking outside a little bit here, and they just have three humongous men standing there. Maybe that'll help. All the Arizona ran for 100 yards against them, uh, you know, their top runner. But overall, they, you know, their defense is more stout up front, I think, will help in the back. Forbes came back. I was really shocked after two games. That was really surprising. Uh, maybe they just patted his hand up. But everything I had read up about the surgery said four weeks. So Eddie came back, helped some, because his replacements aren't any good mm -hmm. there. So overall, it was just, you know, everybody pulled together. What I loved was Jeremy McStevens. I give Adam Peters credit. Nichols, McNichols. Uh, Nichols, when I write Mick Stevens. Mick Nichols is, is um, the guy got two touchdowns. He'd had one in like seven years. This was it, his 12th team. Yeah. I mean, this dude's bounced around. He's like that quarterback they had a few years ago. Um, Josh Johnson. Yeah, he's still playing. You know? yeah. He's <laughs> like, in the XFL last I checked. Uh, that dude was has played for almost, I've had three-fourths of the NFL teams he's been on the roster, you know, at one time. But, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, McNichols. Did some great running, eight carries for 68 yards, two touchdowns. He had a great downfield block that sprung uh, a touchdown. You know, finding those kind of guys, now he was in San Francisco the last stop, so Peter saw him there. But still, to grab those kind of guys, to grab this kicker out of nowhere, mm -hmm. who's pine trees at home, the stuff like that, That's it's really been impressive how many guys uh, Peters has found that are contributing right away. Now, a lot of them are on one-year show-me deals. We'll see what happens next year. I'll worry about next year. So many fans are already going, I don't care about three and one. I want sustained success. But we don't get to see the future. So let's just enjoy the now. People yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, obviously, look, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens next year. I mean, they have $100 million in cap. There's going to be a lot of guys that are going to perform on this team that you're going to have to pay in order to bring back, not boatloads of money, but you know, you look at what they, Luvu, Chin, guys like that, they locked up for three, two, three, four years. But you know, Dorrance Armstrong, they, they locked him up too. But you got guys that are on single, one, one year deals that are probably, or that are contributing to this team. You know what I mean? McNichols is one. You know, it, it's, it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like what's going on with San Francisco right now. You lose Christian McCaffrey and all of a sudden you find this kid. I think they drafted him, but nobody had ever heard of him. And now he's coming in and he's, you know, he's doing a very good job. He's not Christian McCaffrey. Nobody's ever going to be Christian McCaffrey, but this is what we need. This is what we need is, is a guy like Adam Peters that can identify, Hey, if I lose this guy, I've got this guy in my back pocket who we can slide right in. And McNichols has done a very good job of filling in for Austin Eckler. Um, they're not really comparable, I would say, except for maybe their speed. But I tell you that, that, that touchdown against Cincinnati that Eckler had, man, I, I, <laughs> I thought he was an old man and he was washed up. That dude took off. He took off like he had rocket skates on, but, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, that's the thing you need a, you need a GM that can identify obviously starters, but you need a GM that can identify, Hey, if I lose a starter, I got a guy in my back pocket that would fill in pretty damn good. And that's what yeah. we have, hopefully. I mean, look, I have no complaints with Adam Peters so far. I mean, I, the you know, <laughs> for the roster turnover that he created, this team, I mean, they're three and one. Now, granted, you know, they 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 did end up with the second overall pick, and, and he seems to be a little bit better than the first overall pick. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean it's it's been an impressive job all the way around you can't um you can't not talk about uh dan quinn's influence on this team too you can just see it those guys they go out there and they want to play they're 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 motivated they're fired up and they're prepared that's something that we haven't seen we we hadn't seen under ron rivera was a team that was prepared to go in and win they were prepared to go into Cincinnati and win, and they were prepared to go into Arizona and win. Like I said, probably not by as much as they did, but this team was prepared. And and we we haven't had a prepared team around here since probably what Gibbs and Shanahan. Yeah. So everybody's happy. Everyone's celebrating after the win and all this stuff. And I get an email, and it said Washington Wizards Media Day. I thought, oh, what a buzzkill! <laughs> you know, I didn't even, I didn't even open it. I just didn't even want to see and think about that team. It's going to win twenty-two games or something again, and say, oh, we're still, you know, still rebuilding in year eighty-four or whatever. 
You know, so I, I just laughed when I saw that. I thought, I'm not thinking about the Wizards yet. I did like a quote that you had on Twitter where it was like, if you're still rebuilding after year five, you ain't rebuilding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, so when we come back on Thursday show, we'll do the big preview of the Cleveland game, among all the things. Um, so lots going on. Everybody's happy for once around town. Enjoy the moment on there. So I'm Rick Snyder. And I'm Matt. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks for listening to Seasons of Discontent with your hosts, Rick Snyder and Matt Combs. 